morning, children. Before we begin, let us pray. This is God. This is me. Put together makes us one. Bow our heads, close our eyes. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with a heart of thanksgiving. Thank you for blessing us the entire week and keeping us safe. Right now, as we are about to learn your word, may your Holy Spirit fill us. Give us the heart of understanding so that we can know you better and believe in you well. We want to commit this time into Father's hand. All this we pray in our dear Lord Jesus' name with full thanksgiving. Amen. Children, time is very precious to all of us as each of us only have 24 hours a day. No one has 25 or 100 hours. Everybody has the same amount of time. Once the second pass, it is gone. We cannot go back to it. Just like the clock over here. It is ticking and ticking away. The time don't come back again. For children, I know your weekend is so precious. Monday to Friday, you need to wake up early and go to school. Finally, weekend comes and we all want to rest. Time to rest, time to play. Then Sunday comes. Mommy and Daddy will wake you up early and bring you to church. This is the Lord's Day. Or even during lockdown time, we also need to wake up early to attend our Gabriel Sunday School Zoom session or to watch our service through YouTube. So, what is so important about worship and learning His Word? You spend this Lord's Day learning God's Word and worshipping Him. Do you know, children, this time you spend in church for worship, to learn his word, this is the most important and most well-spent time in our entire life. Let's find out. Okay, the whole Bible is about the history of redemption. It covers three parts. First, the creation. Second, the fall of man. And third, the restoration of mankind from the fall. After Adam's sin, God had given the promise of the woman's seed in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Shall we read it together? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Ready? One, two, three. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. This woman's seed, as teacher Shu Fong has shared with us, refers to our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the main character in the Bible. Jesus Christ, he is the only one who can crush the head of the serpent who is Satan and save us. But when did Jesus come? How does he come? And is he coming back? Do you know? God has given us the Bible to tell us this mystery. We, as the children of God, we say, oh, we love you, Jesus. But do we really know him? Do you know, children, when you love someone, you actually want to know everything about the person. It's just like a mother loving her child. The mother will want to know everything that happened to the child. Even simple things like, what do you eat today in school? Or who do you talk to in school today? Or, oh, uh, how is school today? You know, the parents just want to know every single details. When a child is happy, the parents feel happy. When a child is sad, the parents feel the pain too. This is love. So today, children, let me ask you, how much do you know about Jesus? How does Jesus come to this world? Who are the people that God used and worked through to bring forth Jesus to this world? Let us start this journey together to know Jesus better by studying the genealogy. Okay, we have learned about the first two generations. First generation is Adam and second generation is Seth. Today, we will learn about the third generation Seth's son, Enosh. So first, let us see the years they lived. Adam, he had Seth at the age of 130 years old, 
and he lived a total of 930 years and he died. Said he had Enosh at the age of 105 years old and he lived a total of 912 years and he died. Okay, so when Enosh was born, Seth was 105 years old. And then what about Adam? So I take 130 plus 105, that will give me 235. So Adam was 235 years old when Enosh was born. Then for Enosh, he had his son Canaan at the age of 90 years old, and he lived a total of 905 years and he died. Well, they all live a long life, right? <laughs> yes. So when Adam died at 930 years, okay, it is a total of 695 years from the time Enosh was born. So when Adam died, Seth was 800 years old and Enosh was 695 years. So from this chart, we can see that Enosh lived 695 years contemporaneously with Adam. Meaning, for 695 years, both Adam and Enosh, they are together in this world, right? Children, do you know, knowing which generations are still alive in the same time is very important. Why? The duty of the patriarch is to pass down their faith. So Adam, he lived with Enosh contemporaneously for 695 years. Adam is the only man who had experienced the life in the Garden of Eden with God and then also the life after being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. So he will be sharing, oh, you know, the eternal world before the fall, how good it was in the Garden of Eden. Then the fall and then the life after the fall and how Satan deceived him, right? And finally, what is their only hope? The only hope is the woman's seed. That is their only hope of salvation. So imagine if that is your only hope, what would you be doing? You will be sharing this word again and again and reminding your loved ones about it, right? Telling them, hey, you know the woman's seed must come. This woman's seed is the only one that can save you. So he must have preached this and taught his descendants whom he met very diligently. So Enosh is very blessed. Enosh gets to learn about God's word from Adam and his father Seth for many years. Okay? So now we know where Enosh learned the word from too. Okay, now the meaning of Enosh. Enosh, this name means man or mortal frailty. Mortal frailty means man is weak. Seth gave his son this name Enosh, meaning man. Man is weak. You know children, names are very special and they have great significance to a person's life. The parents name a kid normally with number one, their expectation on a child or number two, realization of something that they want the kid to remember. So Seth named his son Enosh, meaning man is weak, mortal frailty. What does he want to teach his son then? Seth wants his son Enosh to know we men, we are very weak. Without seeking God, we are too weak to overcome the temptations and the trials of this world. We, will, we all sin. Therefore, we need God's help. A good example of how weak man is very simple when we are very sick, say, having a high fever of 40 degrees Celsius. You know, when you have such high fever, we cannot walk, we just have no strength, we cannot even talk. It cannot move, right? Indeed, man is in no control of life and death. We cannot control. We are limited by time and space. We men is too weak to overcome the temptations of sins of this world. And we men who is frail, we cannot attain salvation on our own. Because we cannot overcome the temptations of sin, we sin. And the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, you may say, oh, I sin, but maybe my daddy mommy can save me. No, children, all men sin. 
The Bible states this clearly in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Shall we all read it together? Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Ready? One, two, three. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yes, all men sin. So we men cannot save each other. Then who can save us? We need one who is sinless. Only Jesus Christ, who is without sin, can save us. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 19 tells us clearly that we cannot be redeemed by anything of this world, even precious silver or gold. No, we can only be redeemed by the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the unblemished lamb. Okay, shall we read it together too? Ready? One, two, three. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Yes, children, we can only be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So let us give thanks to God. So around this time, Seth named his son Enosh. Men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 4 verse 26 says, And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. The phrase, call upon the name of the Lord, emphasizes the fact that people begin to develop a personal relationship with God. Calling the name of the Lord means you know him. It is like you know your friend and you will call them by name. But for people that you do not know, for example, when you go to a hawker centre or coffee shop to order the food, you will just greet the seller, uncle or auntie, right? That is because you don't know anything about them. Addressing a person by name indicates having a closer and more familiar relations. The Bible connects this significant act of man calling upon the name of the Lord directly to the matter of salvation. Shall we read these two verses together? Acts chapter 2 verse 21. Ready? 1, 2, 3. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. And Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Ready? Let's read it together. 1, 2, 3. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Yes. So as I said earlier, calling the name means you know the person. So calling the name of the Lord means you know him. How do we know him? It is through the word in the Bible. Why? In John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Yes, the word is God. So we come to know God through the word in the Bible. So knowing the word will allow us to believe in Jesus. And when we believe in Jesus Christ and confess that he is our only God, we receive salvation. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Amen. So children, remember this simple, this simple formula. Know the word, learn the word well. When you know the word well, you will believe in Jesus naturally and you will receive salvation. So the fact that men began to call on the name of the Lord implies that a proactive relationship between God and man had begun. The word call here, it has the meaning to proclaim, to cry out. This signifies that the name of God has been proclaimed during this time, the gospel is preached to many people and people begin to gather to have formal worship. So children, now you know when formal worship starts. Formal worship starts during Enosh time. Yes, through worship, man remembers God and draws close to God. This is also why God makes it a command for us to observe Sabbath. This is commandment number four. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
We keep the Lord's day by worshipping Him. Worshipping God is so important in God's eye as that builds the relationship between us and God and draws us closer to God. What do we do in formal worship? We praise Him, we pray and cry out to Him, and then we receive the Word of God, right? Through the Word of God, we understand our God better. We start to know what He likes, what He dislikes, and how is He like, and His plan to save us. Only through knowing Him and keeping His Word can we overcome the temptations and trials of this world. So children, do you see God's heart? God knows we men are lazy and we are easily tempted. So God set this command, observe Sabbath, forcing us to keep Lord's day that is for our own good so that we can know Him and walk in the light and draw closer to Him and believe well and receive our salvation. So children, in conclusion, remember Enosh, the meaning of his name, man, man is weak, right? Man is weak and we men cannot attain salvation on our own. Remember, the wages of sin is death. What we need is, we need the blood of Jesus, who is the blameless lamb. Only the blood of Jesus can cleanse us and make us holy. How do we believe? We need to know Jesus well in order to believe well. Believing in Jesus will give us eternal life. So children, do not miss any worship. Worship is the chance for us to know God and build our relationship with Him. Worship allows us to draw closer to God. So remember children, to keep your Lord's day by worshipping God. All right, now let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this precious time where we learn your word. Through Enosh, we learn that we men are weak. We cannot attain salvation on our own. We need you, Jesus. We need you. Father God, please help us not to miss any Lord's Day service. Help us to keep the worship that you want us so that through worship, we can draw closer to you and know you better and believe in you well. Thank you, Father. Father God, we want to commit the rest of our week all into your hands. May you submit, submit all of us and keep us safe and well. Thank you, Father, so much. All this we pray in our dear Lord Jesus' name with full thanksgiving. Amen. Bye-bye, children. Children, before we end the service with Lord's Prayer, let us remember to put aside all our offerings for God in an envelope. When we come back to church, we can put everything in the offering basket. Alright? Now, let us recite the Lord's Prayer to end the service. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy work will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. First man Amen.